Welcome back to Talking Safety Lesson 3, Making the Job Safer. In this lesson, we'll help students understand the three main ways to reduce or eliminate hazards. The best way to prevent a workplace injury or illness is to remove the hazard. If this can't be done, then hazards can be controlled through work policies and procedures or the use of PPE, personal protective equipment, such as the respirator or hearing or eye protection. Most workplace injuries and illnesses are caused by unsafe environments, not human error. A good way to think about addressing hazards in the workplace is fix the workplace, not the worker. For this lesson, you'll need two flip charts and markers, three by three sticky notepads in different colors for each team of four to five students, a watch or timer, pens or pencils, masking tape, student handouts seven and eight, and prizes such as pencils or candy. Last class, we spoke about how to identify hazards. Today, we're going to talk about how to prevent hazards that could cause injury or illness. Can anyone give me an example of a hazard we discussed last class? Uh, slippery floors. Now, how can that hazard be removed or reduced? Uh, you could put a caution sign over the spill and make sure it's cleaned up quickly. Use floor mats. Slip resistant shoes. No, slip resistant floors. A grease guard. There are a lot of ways to reduce a hazard, but some are more effective than others. See how the pyramid is divided into three categories. Removing the hazard is the most effective means of preventing workplace injuries and illness. Improving work policies is the next effective and wearing personal protective equipment, or PPE, is considered the least effective because it doesn't remove the hazard. Plus, it has to fit and be worn properly every time it's used. It also shifts the burden onto individual workers rather than making the environment safer for everyone. Despite this, you should use PPE whenever an employer gives it to you. Workers might need personal protective equipment even when other safety measures are in place. Some protective equipment can cause its own hazards. For example, respirators need to be fitted to the individual user and matched to the agents they're intended to provide protection against. Respirators increase breathing resistance, so some individuals should not wear them. With that in mind, which of these solutions really gets rid of the hazard of slippery floors? Slip-resistant floors, using floor mats, and installing a grease guard. Good. Now, which are policy improvements? Um, caution signs and wearing slip-resistant shoes. While caution signs would be a work policy and procedure, slip-resistant shoes are a type of PPE. To make sure you understand the different controls to removing a hazard on the job, we're going to play the $25,000 hazard control game. I want you to count off by three and then move into your groups. One, two, three, one. I'm going to read you some real life stories of teens who were injured by hazards at their workplace. Imagine that it's your job to find ways to prevent the injury described in the story. Notice how the pyramid is divided into three categories. Removing the hazard, which is the most effective way. Improving work policies is the next most effective. And wearing PPE is considered least effective. After I read you the scenario, come up with as many ways as possible to protect your workers from the hazard that caused the injury described. You'll get the most points for suggesting ways that remove the hazard and the least number of points for suggestions that use PPE. Here are three rules. Rule one, your answers must be complete and specific. For example, if you just say training, you won't receive any points. Training about what? Be specific. Rule two, your answers also have to relate to the story I read. You can't make up details that weren't part of a story. Here's rule three. Each response should be written on a separate sticky note. One response per sticky note. I need one person on your team to volunteer to write down your group's responses. I need another volunteer from each group to be the runner. When I say time, it's your job to come up and place your team's responses in the appropriate category on the pyramid. 
If any of the teams put an answer in the wrong category, I'll move the sticky note to the right one, and that team will receive points for that category. Okay, let's start. One day, as Jasmine was lifting three large pans out of the sink at once, they slipped out of her hands and back into the sink. The cleaning solution splashed all over the side of her face and got into her right eye. She was blinded in that eye for two weeks. What ways can you think of that would prevent this injury from happening again? Okay, begin. Oh, goggles, we need goggles. Yeah, but we need more points. We gotta get rid of the hazard. Oh, uh, maybe a safer cleaning product? Okay, pens down, time's up. Come up and place your answers on the chart. Let students place their answers where they believe is correct. While reading responses, if an answer is placed in the wrong category, be sure to move it to its appropriate place before calculating the score for that round. Review all of the responses for a team before moving on to the next team. Pull off the sticky notes as you read the responses, recording the points as you go. Let's start with team turn up for safety. Clean one pan at a time. Good, that's a work policy improvement. Use a safer cleaning product. Excellent, that would remove the hazard altogether. $2,000. Use a dishwasher. Very good, that also eliminates the hazard. Goggles. Yes, goggles are a form of PPE, and if used effectively, they could protect you from a hazard that could cause injury or illness. The winner is Team Maximum Safety. <laughs> the best way to prevent a workplace injury or illness is to remove the hazard. If this can't be done, then hazards can be controlled through work policies and procedures or the use of PPE, personal protective equipment, such as the respirator or hearing or eye protection. Most workplace injuries and illnesses are caused by unsafe environments, not human error. A good way to think about addressing hazards in the workplace is fix the workplace, not the worker. This concludes lesson three of six in the Talking Safety training video series. In this lesson, we help students understand the three main ways to reduce or eliminate hazards at work. We also explained which methods are most effective for controlling hazards. We hope you found this training informative. Thanks for watching. You can get more information on young workers' safety and health topics from any of these resources.